it's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hat or Rat. Here we are, not even six months after Lawrence Cheney was crowned, we are taking another trip across the pond to see what our UK queens have to offer. The cast of RuPaul's Drag Race UK season three was just announced, and there's already enough tea to fill a cuppa. There's been a heated debate online about Victoria Scone's casting, who is making history as the first cisgendered female competitor to ever be cast on Drag Race. Queens like Tace and Trinity K. Bonet have called out the diversity or lack thereof of the cast. In Charity Case, one of the other new queens has posted an apology on Twitter concerning, as they put it, disgusting and offensive language used in their past. So we'll be breaking all that down and taking a peek at each queen's promo look as well as looking through their Instagram to see if we can find their out of drag photos as well. Now, let's get started. First up, how about some scones without tea? Victoria lets us know in her Meet the Queens interview she is an AFAB drag queen, meaning she is assigned female at birth. However, she does clarify that while AFAB is an important acronym to use while discussing diversity in drag, she prefers to just be called a drag queen. And as I mentioned, this casting decision was met with a little bit of tension online with some people going as far to make YouTube videos talking about why they don't support her. But instead of lingering on that negativity, I want to go ahead and read a tweet from Denali who worded my feelings on the situation perfectly. If you have a problem with this, you are not a fan of drag nor have seen drag in a club over the past few decades and have an antiquated, misogynistic, and limited view on what drag is and what drag can be. Congrats, Victoria Scone. Again, my opinion is that all drag is valid. At the end of the day, if you can hold my attention as a performer, I don't care how you identify. And concerning Victoria's own thoughts doing drag, in an interview with the BBC, she said, to gatekeep who performs drag seems so backwards to me. As queer people, we are oppressed and marginalized. So why would we continue to do that within our own community? Now, a bit on her look. She describes herself as Cardiff's camp cabaret disco diva. She's giving me like scone oozing in honey. I love the giant hat that she's got on and the silhouette in general that she's created is really beautiful. She definitely gets a for me. And I found this transformation video on her profile, which is incredible. And here's some of her looks from Instagram, proving she's extremely versatile in drag and knows her way around a makeup brush. Next up, a queen so nice, they cast her twice. It's Veronica Green. As you remember, Miss Green was disqualified from season two due to a positive COVID test, but Rue left her with an open invitation to return to season three, and thankfully she's accepted it. Or being held hostage by the contract. Veronica, blink twice if you're okay. Just kidding. I'm sure she's honored to compete but really blink twice if you're okay. Okay, on a real note, I am really excited to see how she's going to treat season three because as she pointed out on her Instagram, she's the first queen to return to the competition with a challenge win under her belt, which did kind of leave me wondering, is that an advantage or a disadvantage? Because on one hand, everything is still super fresh to her and she has the benefit of applying what she learned from season two to season three. But on the other hand, that could cause her to underestimate the challenges and difficulties of this next season. One thing I thought was really funny in her interview was she's using her little catchphrase of going, from Gollum to gorgeous. But Miss Veronica, I have one question for you. Can you explain this photo? <laughs> Anyways, I've really grown quite the appreciation for this queen and I think she looks gorgeous in her promo shoot. She said in an interview with Metro.co.uk that the dress actually belongs to her sister. It was her prom dress when she was 16 and it's special to her because her mother made it. And I'm sure both her sister and her mom are proud because she looks <laughs> in this dress. Next up, Scarlet Harlot. It is so crazy to me that with Scarlet being the relatively popular name that it is, we only had one in the entire 13 season history of US Drag Race. And now almost every international franchise has one. She says in her Meet the Queens interview that she is cheeky, classic, and common as hell. And concerning the look, I am gooped and gagged. She's giving me like classic pageant queen who's a part of the royal family, but from the future. Like I really just love that red sash she has going across her body. This look is red. <laughs> And concerning Scarlett's out of drag persona, I had to check his age because I was like, girl, he looks 16. It turns out he's 27. Girl, drop the skincare routine. Anyways, before I send myself into a depression spiral, let's go ahead and take a look up at the next queen, River Medway. Wow. These queens spent some serious coin on their promo looks and it shows. River is bodied, wigged, beat, and winged, looking like a true queen, or should I say monarch? Fun fact, in her Meet the Queen interview, we learn that she is 50% British white and 50% Singaporean. Also, this has got to be the youngest looking cast ever, or I'm just getting old. I just checked, she is 22, and there's two other queens in the cast who are 19, we'll get to them later. And the other interesting thing I found on River's Instagram, this transformation photo, which she posted about a year ago. And she was gorgeous then, but the glow up from then to now in this promo look, I'm gagged. I guess you could say she's had quite the metamorphosis. <laughs> 
but that does beg the question, which river is gonna show up on the show? Anyways, needless to say, this look is absolutely hot. Next up, orange alert. It's Crystal Versace. It's giving me like fashion forward thinking club wear that could also work on the beaches of Cancun or something. And I was kind of wondering if this look was at all inspired by Ahura or Bimini's fashion, because I could see either of them rocking this just as well. And sure enough, I actually found out that the same designer that did Bimini's Gay Times cover look did this one. Anyways, yes, I absolutely love it. This look is hot. And her Instagram presence is, I think, hands down, one of the most impressive by far. She's got a really unique signature beat, I think, and brand of drag that stands out amongst the rest of the cast. This is one of our 19 year olds and in Crystal's Meet the Queens interview, she says that she's been doing makeup and serving boy looks since she was like 12. Next up, Kitty's got claws. I wonder what she's got under that tree. In her Meet the Queens interview, she has camp and an amazing personality. I think we're gonna get lots of funny moments from her. And her transformation into Kitty is fascinating as well. Like girl, there must be something in the water over in the UK because these queens can paint. Her outfit though, honestly, I don't particularly care for it myself. It's just not my personal style, but I think she looks beautiful. My only critique is that I wish it told me a little bit more about who she is as a queen. So I'm gonna leave this look at a warm, and before we go any further, I want to quickly remind you that my channel is made possible by my patrons on patreon.com slash bussyqueen. That's my members only website where my patron family gets access to exclusive videos, early access to my main channel YouTube videos, access to the Bussy Queen Discord server, the ability to vote in hottest hot polls every single week, and more. You can get all those benefits and support the channel by clicking the link in the description of this video. See you there. Now, let's get back to it. Next up, it's been one hell of a day, innit? So her name is Ella Vade, and I used the British accent there so that you could get the pun, hell of a day. In her interview, we learned that she is an actor. <laughs> ha! Ha! I'm acting. A singer and a dancer. And transformation is her specialty. She's actually somebody that I saw popping up on my recommended Instagram feed for like the past year. Out of drag, I'm like, Maury, woo, that's a man. And in drag, I'm like, Maury, woo, that is a woman. I will say though, we all love a hottie with a body. We love picking out the trade of the season and yada, 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 but body and looks aren't everything. I'm curious to see what else Miss Ella is going to offer us in the competition. Hopefully some of that acting, singing, and dancing. And the outfit itself is pretty. It's like this head to toe nude illusion with crystals all over it. But I do feel the same way about this look as I do about Kitty's. Does she look beautiful? Yeah. But it does leave me with a couple questions about like who she is as a queen and what her unique take on drag is. So same as Kitty, this is a warm hot for me. Next up, girl, I'm shocked. And she is too. It's Electra Fence. And I love that all these queens are using Electra as a pun on electricity, but every time I hear the name Electra, I think of Jennifer Garner in the movie Electra. Anyways, this season is literally full of cute boys. Also on her Instagram, I found this picture of her next to Tia Coffee. Oh my God, the like high difference of three feet. And her promo look, I absolutely am in love with because it very much immediately says Electra. It has all the look and personality and a look that I want from a queen in a meet the queen setting. Like she's not only been struck by lightning, but she is the lightning. Plus the wig is taking me to like a Dragon Ball Z Super Saiyan space, which I'm living for. I think this look is smoldering. <laughs> Next up, Vanity Milan, another queen, proving that this is the season of cute boys. It's obvious the casting team over there knows how to get the audience interested. In her interview, she says that she's only been doing drag for one year, which is very impressive. And I think is even more impressive when we look back at her Instagram and see one of the first looks that she ever posted from 2019 in this beautiful orange dress and boots. And I'm not sure if her promo look is a reference to that look, but I'm loving the different textures that she used with the feathers, the fringe on the inside, and the almost like pineapple apple pattern of sequins on the rest of it? Aren't you glad I didn't make an orange pun? This look is hot. On the topic of diversity, you will notice that Vanity is the only black queen in the cast, which I think is really important to talk about because I think diversity and representation absolutely matters. Here's what some of the alumni from the show have had to say about this. Taste tweeted, congrats to all the S3 slags. I'm so proud to see so many familiar faces and excited to get to know the unfamiliar. With that being said, I am a little taken aback by the lack of diversity that's been casted, especially as I personally know so many incredible POC, trans, and AFAB performers. Hopefully 
things will improve and for now I wish nothing but the best for the S3 girls. You deserve all the love today. This is your moment. Live it up, hounds, and F it up always. And Trinity K. Bonet posted this on her Instagram story. Question, are there not a lot of black queens in the UK? And I certainly can't speak for the UK, much less a specific population within it. So I did some research and I found this amazing interview with the queen named Frida Slaves, which is an amazing drag name, by the way, that was helpful to me in providing insight into why the cast of UK looks like it does. In that article, we learned that Frida actually would have been cast on Drag Race UK season one had she submitted an audition tape. And the interviewer asks her, of course, why she didn't. Her response was, there are a lot of articles saying there needs to be more diversity on the show, that they should have put so-and-so on, but none of us auditioned. So the question is, why aren't they auditioning rather than why aren't they on the show? We just don't have the money or the time to make it in order to do it, which is an important reminder of the sacrifices that people have to make to go on this show. It's not cheap, as I've talked about in a video. And on top of all that, in the UK, there is zero prize money. This whole article is an excellent read, and I've linked it in the description of this video, but I would love to hear from y'all. What do you think that Drag Race UK and Drag Race as a franchise should do to increase diversity in casting? Next up, Chorizo May, whose name, of course, is a pun on the Spanish word chorizo, which means sausage. And also, like, I think on the name Teresa. And Miss Teresa is from España. Hola, como esta? This is another queen with tons of personality, and I think a really interesting take on drag. I love the coat that she has on. It kind it feels like a dragged up version of like a mariachi coat or something. Plus, I always love learning more about other cultures and I love when queens can incorporate parts of their heritage into their drag. Choriza está muy caliente. Finding Choriza's out of drag pictures were a little more difficult, but I did find a couple on her gram. And I was also shocked to see how many different types and styles of makeup and drag she can do. Like one minute she's Marge, the next she's I'm blue da 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 da. Next up, Anubis. She did say in her Meet the Queens interview that she has Egyptian heritage. She is celebrating with that name. This look, girl. <laughs> Gooky, crazy, wild. Uh, let's start with what I really like about it, the hair. I love the different colors and textures and waves and spikes in it. Really, really fun. She gave me like crazy clown on a bit of an acid trip. The actual outfit that she's wearing, I think she had an interesting idea, but ultimately a crash landing. The top is giving me like a take on Britney's flight attendant outfit, but the bottom part is giving me like spray painted camping tent. So while it is very unique and I celebrate her wig with a hot, the overall outfit is going to get a rot. That said, I do want to celebrate some amazingly hot looks on her Instagram and also some hotty hot hot boy looks. Next up, Charity Case. So if you follow drag queens on Instagram, you've no doubt seen this queen somewhere in your recommended feed. They had like over 100,000 followers coming into all of this. And I think we're most well known for their like hundreds of days of drag that they did. Every day was a new interpretation of some pop culture or cartoon figure, but with like her own unique horror take on it. And that no surprise extends to her promo look, which is googly goopity gaggediness. It's wild. I don't think we have ever seen a promo look like this. This is grand finale levels of eleganza that she brought to this. She's giving me Spyro the Dragon goes to the drag ball, dripping in crystals. Seriously, props to her and the team that put this look together because it's undeniably fireball levels of hot. And now on to the drama. I was perusing her social media and noticed that people have been calling her out on Twitter and on Reddit for some tweets and social media posts that she made in her past. Here's what she had to say about all of that on Twitter. Today, some tweets surfaced from eight years ago, which consist of me using disgusting and offensive language in a casual colloquial way. I was 16 and uneducated at the time, unaware of cultural misappropriation and the impact of my use of language. I totally accept that this doesn't excuse my behavior. I want you to know how deeply sorry I am. I am not that same young boy today. I take full responsibility for these unacceptable tweets and I hope you can understand that they do not represent me now or what I stand for today. I have changed and grown and I'm committed to growing further to using the platform and privilege I have to amplify the voices of people of color. Ultimately, I think it's nice to see Charity acknowledging and taking ownership of her past, apologizing and committing to growth. Personally, when I evaluate somebody's character, I always look at who they are today. Because at the end of the day, if we as a society don't allow room for people to grow and change, then nobody ever will grow and change. 
That said, everyone's reactions to and feelings about situations like this are completely and 100% valid. So as always, I'd love to hear your take on things and read what you have to say concerning this situation down in the comments below. And while you're down there, don't forget to let me know who you're rooting for and which promo look was your favorite. And as for my hottest in this set of promo looks, well, it's time for me to make a donation because I've got to give it to charity. I've also asked my patrons to vote on their hottest look and they've also chosen charity. As always, I want to thank you for watching this video and my generous patrons for making my channel possible. And I want to give a special shout out to Lolly, Coram Applin, J420, Media Megan, and Wendy and Ryan who were all supporting my Patreon at the tier. And Abel Adams, Aiden, Allison Lux, Anna Miriam, Anthony, August Everywhere, B-Rolls, Bradley, Brett, Cameron, Kathy, Cherry Poppins, Christopher, Claire Moosdale, Dar Misha, Delani, Torture Leather, Devin Cook, Dr. Martin, Evan, Lo, Fractalize, GJ Bearclaw, Got the Morbs, Hussam Bachan, Jared Rocks, Jay, JJ, James, Jenny, Jen X, Jesse, Johnny, Giovanni, Kevin, Kiki and John, Lisa Lang, Adam Muffy, Manos, Melinda, Millennial Hissy Fit, Nathan, Nick O, Nuva Ringwald, Opal, Pasquale Nava, Poutine Levine, Ron Shannon, Shazzy, Sir John, Sultan Tammy, Timotheus, Tony Topher, Travis Tyler, and Vendetta, who are all supporting me at my hottest hot tier. And Ali Al, Angel, Caroline Cyrus, Felicia, Gody P, JB, Joseph, Josh Marchant, JP in Dallas, Laura, Nurse Luca, Matthew, Maxila, Wow, Robert Reeves, Scooby Snacks, Sailor, Steven, Tom Jaco, Tom Young, Triton, and who are all supporting me at my Bussy Queen Collector tier. See y'all later. Love ya.